Yeah, Mr. Bittner got all that, okay. We need our clerk. We need a clerk. <laughs> we don't have a clerk. I'll start, I'll take minutes. <laughs> it's the reason this is recorded, right? <laughs> oh, there she is. We just need to go back in session, right? Uh, I assume that we can start now. It says start. <laughs> right. I think we're going to have an update on the uh, transportation project scoring. Anthony Prince will provide that, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As always, it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, you remember several months ago we began the discussion on the new STI legislation that was enacted by the General Assembly as well as the accompanying P3.0 prioritization process that will ultimately determine how transportation funding is allocated uh, into the future. Um, what we'd like to do tonight is to briefly touch on STI again as well as the P3.0 process to provide good context leading into a discussion on some of the pre preliminary results. Uh, preliminary results meaning some of the projects that we know are in fact going to be funded and then other projects where we need to continue the local prioritization process to bring them up in priority to potentially fund them uh, with the next uh, transportation improvement program. Timeline for prioritization 3.0. Uh, started in, in 2013. We actually began uh, the staff work before October, but really what I wanted to point out with this slide is that it's, it, there are three key tasks here. So first, we had to develop a, a project list, and, and that is the inventory of projects that we would like for the DOT to consider for funding. And if you think back to, to February when we met last, that was the, the subject of our discussion is, you know, what are the projects on that list that might impact our community? Uh, once we got the project list done, we then began the prioritization effort, and we're currently working on that. And uh, when all that's said and done, then we'll begin the programming part, which takes those priority projects and identifies which ones will specifically receive funding and when. And as I mentioned before, the Transportation Improvement Program is the document that the MPO and the DOT will adopt concurrently, identifying which projects will move forward. So prioritization is happening right now. We expect to adopt the TIP in, in July of uh, 2015. And between now and then, during that year, there's going to be a lot of behind-the-scenes work to formulate that TIP. We're going to send it out for public comment and, and hopefully bring it back in on uh, in July 15 or, or even before. Uh, that date is critical because if we do not meet the July 15 date, we are uh, run, we would run the risk of, of losing some federal funds for, for construction projects. <coughs> Just as a refresher, the STI uh, model looks STI like... STI stands for what? It's, excuse me, sir, yes. The, uh, the Strategic Transportation Investment Model. So it's the legislation that was enacted by the General Assembly that creates the financing program long term for transportation investments. Uh, for a number of years, it was the highway equity formula, and now it, it's changed hands it's, or changed forms. It's not uh, an equity base, it's a function base system. So there are three pots of funding created, and again, they're, they're based on function. We're at the statewide level, we're looking at the highest mobility type of facilities. So interstates and uh, the busiest airports, class one uh, rail lines, all the way down to the division level, which is the most localized level, are two lane roadways, uh, bicycle pedestrian facilities and transit, et cetera. Uh, one of the points uh, that I'll make here is that projects can cascade down so if initially they're in the statewide tier and they are not funded, uh, they can cascade down into the regional, and if they're not funded there, then they can go down to the division. And that's important when we do our prioritization effort because we're not thinking of each three of these as a separate box. They are somewhat interrelated. 
So moving into uh, a review of the of some of the results here. I'm sorry, I didn't yes, understand sir. about the cascading. If it's not funded on a state level, you assume that the funding is still going to be there for the regional and the division? Well, I, I don't think that's an assumption there. The, the, the thought is if it doesn't if it doesn't qualify for funding or if it doesn't compete well for funding at the statewide level, then it would just roll down to, re to the regional level and compete there as well. So they allocate all of the statewide money first and then the regional and then the division. And I think an important point there is, is at, the, at the regional level and at the, at the division level, you get to assign some points locally. Mm -hmm. At the state level, it's all done based on the scoring of the P3 model. So if a project doesn't get funded with the, at the state level, if you don't want to make that project go forward with regional funding, right. you don't put any points on it. And then it, it's not competitive. That's exactly you know, right. So it doesn't automatically come down and, and be considered for funding. Right. There, there may be other projects that locally we feel deserve our, our local points and want those projects to move forward. But it can compete if in fact it's an important project, then we can support it and hopefully it can <coughs> compete successfully for regional or division funding. That's right. And let me give you an example, and this is not necessarily as hypothetical as it may sound. Let's say that on the statewide basis, we put in a project to build an interstate connector from Jacksonville to 95. That would be a statewide project. But when they rank with the statewide projects, they may say, you know, it's a good project, but all these other things have the money, so the money's gone. Well, you can say, well, it's still important to us. We're going to look at it from a regional standpoint. So projects can move from one pot of funding down. What can't happen is the other. If it's in the regional, it can't go up and compete at the state. So that's yeah, a, not, a simple example. Eligible, right, if it's not eligible. That's exactly right. <clears throat> okay. And the evaluative criteria change from category to category. So they're not, the evaluative criteria are not the same from statewide to regional to division. So it's evaluating the same project using different measures based upon the, the purpose of that individual funding tier. Looking at some of the results, the statewide category, as Ron mentioned, is completely different than the others. And the fact that it's, it's, a, it's data in, projects out. Okay, so it's, it's a strict math calculation. It's, it's not, there, there's no way to really influence the process with local preference. So you input the project data and then out comes, you know, a, a prioritized list of projects that move forward towards implementation. And what this map shows is the distribution of those funded projects across the state. Uh, we are in southeastern North Carolina in Division Three, which as you see on the map there, 11 funded projects. That ranks second throughout the entire state only to Division Five, which is the Raleigh-Chapel Hill metro area. And, and given the fact that there's more people, more congestion, it makes sense that there would be more projects funded. But I think we've done very well for ourselves in Division Three in, in competing for statewide projects. So let me see if I understand the map. If you look at the area Division Eight, that's white, and Division 14, which is white, mm -hmm. it appears they've got no projects funded or recommended for funding at the state level. Is that the way you read that chart? That's exactly right. Sir. And so again, in ours, which is three, you're saying we have how many recommended? Eleven projects. Okay. They're they're actually not recommended. They are funded projects. So that that is basically set in stone. DOT's already done the math on it. The results are out, and those are funded projects. So the only question is, when will they fit in the schedule? Looking at it from a more localized perspective, this map shows the exact same information based upon MPO and RPO allocation. So MPO being the Metropolitan Planning Organizations like ours, the Jacksonville MPO, and then rural planning organizations that make up the balance of, of the county outside the metro areas. So one of the things to point out <clears throat> is that only two of the projects were allocated to a rural area 
and that's shown up there in the northwestern corner of the state in the, in the Boone, Banner Elk uh, vicinity. Uh, the balance of those projects were allocated to metropolitan areas. And as you saw with the DOT divisions, some fared better than others in this process. If you look at Jacksonville there, uh, eastern part of the state, about mid uh, way up the screen, uh, between the, the red Newburn area and, and kind of the olive colored uh, Wilmington area, six of those 11 projects allocated to Division Three were for, uh, were to the Jacksonville area. So we've been very successful in, in bringing those statewide projects uh, to our community. Um, the main reason that we were able to do that is because the TAC put together a, a very sound strategy uh, when, when developing the project <coughs> list. So first and foremost, we wanted to make sure that the projects we submitted were effective, you know, they met some sort of need, that they were affordable, and that they also worked within the prioritization system. So very sound decision making on, on behalf of our, our TAC. Uh, but one thing to point out here, again, there are some that did better than others. Uh, Jacksonville, six. Uh, Wilmington, five. New Bern, three projects. But unfortunately, some of our close by neighbors, it didn't fare as well. So Goldberg, Goldsboro, Greenville, and Rocky Mount, even though they're in very similar type of situations as far as population and congestion, they were not as successful as we were. Looking at the individual projects, I think a lot of these are very solid <coughs> and they're critical needs for our community right now today. So it's good to see that they're moving forward towards implementation. Uh, Western Boulevard, Marine Boulevard improvements, in the past, we've talked about the difference between an interchange project that DOT wanted to push forward a number of years ago versus what's on the screen here, which is a widening. So to widen that intersection within the existing right-of-way to improve capacity uh, to help alleviate some congestion. Marine Piney Green Road improvements, that's a widening project as well. Uh, the Western Boulevard, Lejeune Boulevard culvert, that's more of a stormwater type of project to help increase the, the throughput capacity of the, of the stormwater system underneath that intersection to help alleviate some, some flooding. Bridge road realignment at, two, at US 258, that's a project that's uh, seen a lot of public comment lately based upon the, the, the crashes that have occurred out there. Uh, that project is also moving forward to help improve the safety out there. And then we have two either or projects, okay? put them on a, a specific location, 258, NC24, and NC53. That's the intersection of the Jacksonville Bypass uh, with Highway 53 and Richlands Highway as you're going, as you're heading uh, westbound towards Richlands. So the big intersection there that queues up uh, during morning and evening peak hour. One of the projects is to widen that intersection at grade. So type of an inner, a more interim type of improvement. But the longer term improvement is to construct an interchange there. So a great separation where you take the traffic signal out and create a, a free flowing type of traffic pattern out there. Now over the next couple of years, we'll be working with the DOT to figure out which one of those to push forward. Uh, but right now, both of those are funded projects. So we're relatively certain that something is going to happen out there within the next five, seven years. <clears throat> so moving on to the regional projects, regional and division are completely different animal and the fact that we do have the ability to influence the final prioritization, okay? We have the ability to assign local points to the end project score to help bring them up in the ranking and potentially uh, had them as funded projects. And I believe um, over the past week, maybe more recent than that, you received a spreadsheet that looks a little bit like this in your email. Uh, this is the preliminary uh, project scoring that was endorsed by the TAC last week. Okay. Now this is not set in stone. What we, what we considered this is more of a reference point, a place to begin 
but rather than going through this line by line, what I've done here with the presentation is just to highlight some of the projects that we really want to emphasize at, uh, at both levels, both regional as well as the division level. And I'm sure that all of these you've seen before, but uh, please stop me if you have any questions. <coughs> NC-111 widening, that's a project that would widen uh, Catherine Lake Road between 258 and the airport. Mm -hmm. The intent there is not necessarily to make that a multi-lane roadway, like a median divided facility, but just to install turn lanes left and right where necessary to improve uh, traffic flow as, as well as safety. Uh, another project that we're, that we're emphasizing on the draft prioritization list is uh, an extension of 111 across the New River from 258 over to Gum Branch Road. Now the intent of that project is threefold. You know, first of all, we want to get the crossing because we need a secondary crossing in the New River to help alleviate some of the congestion in town. But it also provides an outer loop by connecting to Ramsey Road, which would then connect all the way over to Highway 17. And it also gives us the opportunity to increase the designation on Gum Branch Road to NC status, which would make it eligible for, for more uh, enhancement as well as maintenance funds from DOT. Other projects, extension of the Jacksonville Parkway, we've talked about this several times. So where it ends at Gateway North, we'd like to see it curl past the, the commons, back up towards Ramsey Road, connecting um, at a point, I don't know, half a dozen miles, well, not, not even that far, maybe four or five miles north of Marine Boulevard. And then with that section of Ramsey, also see it improved to a, a multi-lane highway. What would be nice is eventually to get a fly over there and, and some other way of getting off of the parkway on the western other than what's going on out there now of course you know that a lot of that traffic backs up over there in the evenings or <clears throat> morning and evening right and just to clarify for any of the folks who are viewing this in, in the commons area this would be a road that would not go through the commons rather it would go through the undeveloped property which is above the commons that's exactly right yes, sir and, and the goal of these two projects is to continue the bypass concept. Right now, the bypass dumps off on Western Boulevard. If we implement these two projects, it would continue on back to Marine Boulevard, creating a true, what I would consider more of an internal bypass of, of uh, Highway 17 there. Some other projects of emphasis, uh, US 17 Old Maplehurst Interchange. So that's right at the air station main gate alleviating some of the, the peak hour congestion there. Uh, Marine Boulevard Gum Branch Road intersection improvements, adding some turn lanes, dual lefts from Marine onto Gum Branch, and then from Marine onto uh, Belfort Road as well. Some improvements to right turn lanes. And then uh, Western Boulevard access management. Now, we've talked about this project several times. This is the potential median uh, for the older section of Western Boulevard between Highway 17 and Highway 24. Now, right now, we don't know exactly what that project looks like, but the MPO is working on a corridor study to help provide some guidance on, on how that would actually look when it's constructed. And because this is a multimodal process, we did also place some emphasis on improving the airport. Uh, the airport is within the Jacksonville MPO planning area and specifically we're looking for some some access road improvements as well as to construct the uh, uh, a new control tower or construct a control tower which we don't currently have moving to division projects more of a localized level uh, widening Henderson Boulevard that's the existing two and three lane section between Gum Branch Road and, and Western. I think we can all agree that that's at or above capacity right now and is sorely needed. Uh, and then also extending Henderson over to uh, Jacksonville Parkway extension. So once the parkway is extension, that would provide the opportunity to tie in Henderson, providing some good circulation for that entire area. Uh, one project that we may not have talked about in detail in the past but it did score very well in the process is Trade Street. Now, Trade Street is the first lateral road 
connecting between Jacksonville Parkway and Western Boulevard as you come over the overpass. So it, it goes right down there by where the old credit union used to be. Uh, this project would not only improve that intersection, widen it out to have more left and right turning lanes, but it would also construct a new roadway behind Walmart connecting over to McDaniel Drive. And, and the purpose of this project is to help bring some of that commons traffic back over towards the parkway, taking it out of the Marine Boulevard, Western Boulevard intersection. To that rear service road concept that we're trying to, to implement throughout the city. Other projects of emphasis, uh, Western and Gum Branch intersection improvements. We've talked about that several times. So the, the purpose there is to construct two left turn lanes from Western, or excuse me, from Gum Branch Road onto Western Boulevard. I think we all know how that backs up in the morning you know, during peak hour traffic extending Commerce Drive from behind uh, National Volkswagen on over to Piney Green Road. And then uh, the development community has plans to continue that road, Commerce Drive, from Piney Green on over to uh, Wolf Swamp Road. So again, that, that rear service road concept that, that would help to alleviate some of the congestion on Marine. Uh, again, in multimodalism here, we've got some sidewalk infill projects. Uh, and we also place some emphasis on the multimodal center. That being the central transit facility for our entire community, where Jacksonville Transit, Greyhound, Amtrak can all operate from one central location. So in a nutshell, those are the projects that we're really emphasizing with the draft prioritization list. Uh, where we're going next, we want to continue to solicit um, public comment public involvement and uh, we posted the, the draft list on the MPO webpage. Uh, we, were sent, we sent out a, a press release last week asking for more comment but we're also going out into the community national night out and we're going to try to take advantage of a very captive audience and we're going to have maps out there we're going to have people uh, to talk to, uh, to the citizens as they walk by hopefully to seek some proactive feedback on, on what we're proposing here. Once a com public comment period is, is complete, uh, we expect TAC approval to occur sometime in mid-August. And then, as I mentioned before, the end goal is to, is to wrap up the TIP programming process in July 15. So we've come a long way, but there's still a long ways to go. And, and, and I hope that you feel that we're pushing forward some really valid projects that will help to improve mobility within our community over the long term. Also, we'd like to recognize uh, you have two MPO members. Uh, Mr. Lazaro is not here this evening. Mr. Warden, you sit on there. Any comments you'd like to make on this? A comment that the, the, the list that Anthony passed around, that paper copy, is in your iPad. So you can down, download it, uh, you know, with the, with the workshop agenda. And when you look at it, <clears throat> you know, there's some color-coded sections on there. The color-coded sections are the sections that the TAC has proposed to put points on That's right. <clears throat> in each of the categories. And then what you see on there, you see two scores right now in a total. You see the score that came out of the, the SPOT 3.0 process that the computer basically assigned to it. You see the proposed points that the MPO would assign to it. <clears throat> and then right now the score so far there's one more point value that goes on there and that's the district engineer yes, sir. yeah or division engineer. division engineer the division yes. engineer and and this is out of right now you're looking at out of a hundred points with 15 yet to be assigned so that's the the kind of interim score for that those projects and that and same thing for the for the division projects. We don't really know how the division folks are really going to put their points. They, they attend our TAC meetings and they hear our input, so I'm hoping that will have some influence on what they do. I, I don't, we're not really sure how they're going to yep. sit down and do their input, their points. But, but anyhow, so if you have a chance to look at the list and you have any questions, 
we'd be glad to sit down and talk to you individually uh, on any questions, any of the projects and that, but we just want to know where we, where we are in the process and between now and the middle of next month or so, you know, we'll be finalizing it and the TAC will be, you know, putting the blessing on the, the final point assignment in that. That's right. I would like to make one additional comment. Uh, we scored extremely well because we had competitive projects. But having competitive projects also mean that, that somebody had to do the staff work to document that they were competitive. It would uh, certainly not be appropriate if we did not take a moment to say to you as a council that we're very fortunate as a city government, as a community, to have Anthony Prince. His dedication, his professionalism, his knowledge in these areas brings us great benefit and what you see in that scoring is a direct result of I think his hard work so well done. That's a good job. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. I can't take all of the credit. I, I do have a support staff that's helped a lot with that but uh, really appreciate your recognition. And the fact he's a Clemson person we won't let that go. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't think so. I, th I thought he was smarter than that. <laughs> Anybody have anything? <laughs> I do. Want to share? Okay. I have a question. What consideration is being given to 24 and Hargett Street pedestrian crossing? That's a good question, sir. Really, that project isn't large enough to where it would fit within this prioritization process. Mm -hmm. uh, really, that's something that we would work with DOT local on. Okay. Uh, the threshold for being consideration here is half a million dollars. So that pedestrian crossing wouldn't cross that threshold. We'd probably just work through the CIP development process to identify some local funding and match that with some local DOT money to make that happen. But you also bring up, uh, you remember one of the projects was the uh, improvements in the drainage system at that same intersection. In Western and 24? No, we're talking about uh, Hargett. I'm Hargan, sorry, you said Hargett and 24. Yes, sir. And we, we have extended, for just one thing, we've extended the sidewalk mm -hmm. along the, the Driver's License Bureau so it's now at the intersection. When the when the, the NC24 Greenway goes in, we're going to have sidewalk on the cemetery mm -hmm. side. So the last piece is really mm -hmm. dealing with the actual crosswalks. And so we've been inching our way towards... That's right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. now that we have an in-house signal crew, we could do a lot of that work ourselves. Okay. So rather than relying on a contractor, installing PET signals is a very routine thing for those guys, and it drastically minimizes the cost. So really all it would end up being is just a little bit of sidewalk work, uh, some, some paint on the pavement, and installing pedestrian signals. We'll and bring we you back a report on that. Yeah. Thank you. One other thing that we would mention, uh, John, do you want to talk about the uh, the property where the multimodal and potentially Station 5 would be? We received today, uh, in reference to that property, which is uh, by the trail, Thompson Street, Longley Supply, 17, you know, where we're talking about those. That, uh, and it's been in the first letter, I think, or correspondence was sent in February of 2013 asking for them to uh, give that to us in uh, fee simple, if you will. But the response was today that they believe that we already have enough ownership of it by the quit claim deed that as long as it is a com uh, compatible project, and of course that the motor, motor center and the fire station would be compatible and does not in any way uh, compromise the trail, that they're comfortable with us doing that. And that's great and good news, which we could have learned it a lot earlier. The, the question that we raised and we discussed with them today, but again, I think this is all we're going to get from them, is we're not sure from uh, our level how a lender or a bonding company would look at that quick claim deed and receive that same information because uh, to do these projects is going to take some kind of financing. But again, uh, this is what the government has come back with, which is, is again, it's good news that they uh, are looking through these two projects at least and others as long as they don't compromise the trail and again we you know that's given to us 20 years with that restriction on it of course no one's doing well with the trail but nine of the, those years have already passed so there's 11 more before it would be in, totally in fee simple hours totally. 
And while we're not ready to build Station 5, Fire Station 5 at this time, that, as you've seen from the studies, that's a location. Well, working through the attorney just to get that interpretation has now saved you, pick a number, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars of land purchase. So while we're not ready to build it, we know that that lot is now in our ownership. It is reserved for that use unless you direct otherwise. As Mayor members of Council, that concludes our areas for workshop unless you have other items. Council. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.